In this video, we're going to be looking at some of the common special tests for diagnosing tears to the subscapularis muscle. As a quick review, the muscle shown on the left in green is the subscapularis. It originates off of the large subscapular fossa of the scapula, which covers most of the anterior surface of the scapula, as you can see in the picture. This convergent muscle then narrows down and inserts on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. It's innervated by the upper and lower subscapular nerves, and its action is glenohumeral internal rotation, sometimes just written shoulder internal rotation. As opposed to the supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles, which are susceptible to degeneration by aging, the subscapularis muscle is a lot more robust and requires larger forces to cause any significant damage. The most common mechanisms of injury would be extreme shoulder hyperextension, like you see here in this short clip, and also extremes of external rotation. The descent phase of a supine pec fly exercise is not pure external rotation. However, large loads coupled with poor muscular control of the movement can lead to a tear of the subscapularis. These tears can be diagnosed by a couple of special tests which we're going to cover in this video now. Those are the belly press test and the Gerber liftoff test. Let's now talk about the belly press test. This is one of two commonly used special tests to assess whether somebody has a tear specifically in the subscapularis muscle. To perform this test, the patient's going to be either in standing or seated. I'm actually going to show it in standing right here. The patient's then going to place the hand of their affected side on their belly just below the xiphoid process and know that it's the palmar side of the hand that's in contact with the belly and then they're going to press into the belly as much as they can. A positive test here is going to be reproduction of the patient's familiar shoulder pain when they press in. Now it looks like a fairly simple test, and overall it is. However, you do need to watch for compensations here. One common compensation you'll see is when they press into the belly, the wrist actually goes into flexion. If the wrist is to flex, the test results are no longer valid. The wrist really needs to be maintained in a neutral position like you see right here. The wrist is neutral and so whenever I press in, the movement is localized pretty much just to the shoulder joint. Okay, And again, a positive test is reproduction of the patient's familiar shoulder pain. Now for the psychometrics of the belly press test. The sensitivity as you can see is pretty poor, it's ranging between 30 and 40 percent. The specificity, on the other hand, is pretty good, ranging from 92% to 96%. In other words, if somebody performs the belly press test and they have a positive test, there is roughly a 92 to 96% chance that they have a tear in their subscapularis muscle. Okay, so pretty good specificity there. We're now going to talk about the Gerber liftoff test, sometimes just called the liftoff test. This is one of two commonly used special tests to assess whether somebody has a tear in their subscapularis muscle. To perform this test, the patient will either be standing or seated. I'm doing this in a standing position here. So the patient will functionally internally rotate their shoulder, which allows them to place their hand on their back. So you basically put your hand on your back, but it's the dorsal side of the hand that's in contact with the back, not the palm. Once the hand is here, the patient then attempts to further functionally internally rotate their shoulder and lift the hand off of their back. That's the liftoff component of the test. So let's take a look at that right now. So there's the functional internal rotation, dorsal side of the hand in contact, and there's the liftoff. What is a positive test? It's reproduction of the patient's familiar shoulder pain, in particular during the liftoff component of the Gerber liftoff test. Here's another view of the Gerber liftoff test. Now you'll notice here that the liftoff test has fairly similar psychometric properties to the belly press test, which was the other test that allows us to assess for a tear in the subscapularis muscle. For the Gerber liftoff test, the sensitivity is pretty poor. It's about 0.35 or 35%. 
so we really aren't going to use that value. It's the specificity that we care about. The specificity is 0 0.98 or 98%. In other words, if somebody has a positive Gerber liftoff test, there's a 98% chance that they have a subscapularis tear.